How's everybody today? Oh man, lift your hands to heaven and get another drink. Nothing worse than a straight Christian. Amen? We want to be drunk. We want to be filled with God's presence. We want to be possessed by him. Possessed. Because if you're not a lover of God's presence, there's something wrong with you. Amen? Then you love another presence. Oh, glory. To worship the Lord is the most awesome thing that you can do. It is the greatest way that you can express thank you. See, because if you can't humble yourself in worship, then there's something wrong with you. Amen. Amen. You're full of stinking pride. And God rejects the pride but gives grace to the humble. You want truth, right? Amen. Amen. Oh, glory. God is not only the God of love, but he's the God of judgment. And his throne is established by justice and justice and righteousness. Justice and righteousness. So when you get before him, what is going to allow you into heaven is justice and righteousness not being good. Amen. Amen. Justice and righteousness. That's what allows you in. There's going to be many people who say, man, I've been good. I've been a good boy. Did Santa Claus even visit me? He's nothing but a jolly demon, let me tell you. <clears throat> I've been good. I did this. I did that. You know, come on, man. I wasn't, you know, I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I didn't do this. I didn't do all of these things. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't do my will. Well, what, what was your will? You never even sought it. You wouldn't even fight for my presence. That's where all the answers are in my presence, he says. You're still... Keeping your presence, and your presence stinks. It's not until you exchange your presence for his presence that you change. Oh, glory, lift your hands to heaven and say amen. <laughs> Woo! We need to go somewhere this morning Amen. before we get going. Okay. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter something. Are you there? there? Second Corinthians chapter six. Glory to God. Second Corinthians chapter six. Woohoo. The word is true. The word is true. If you don't read your word, you're going to be out of place and out of order. This Bible is true. I want you to know. Not because somebody told me, but when the Lord came to visit me, it was the first words out of his mouth because I didn't believe this thing. He said, my Bible is true, guy. So, okay, you got it. My Bible is true. See, people try to live a Christian life without the word of God. You can't. It's impossible. So don't, don't let nobody tell you. Well, I believe in the word. Let me tell you what the word believe means, to follow. You can say you believe all stinking day long. But if you don't follow, you're not his. Has everybody got it? Amen. Listen, God is bringing things to the earth right now. There is a shaking that's going on. We must be in position for what's happening. He's bringing his backslidden children back home. I'm telling you right now, things are happening. You're going to see a tremendous change happen soon. The world that we used to live in will no longer be the same soon. It's going to be completely different. So you've got to be willing to shift. Not with the way the world changes, but the way he changes. Because when he says do this, we've got to do this. Amen? In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11, he says, Oh, Corinthians. Now, this doesn't mean just Corinthians. He said, Oh, my people. We have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections or emotional desires. You're restricted by your own emotional desires because you're still allowing emotional decisions to be made by you instead of the decisions by truth. Living out of the life of feeling is living out of the doctrine of the devil. Has everybody got that? 
Because that's what he says. His doctrine is do what you feel like. That's not how God says it. He says, do what I tell you. In verse 13, in return for the same, I speak to you as children, you will also be open. Here he's trying to tell us something. Don't be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. Why? It's going to be dangerous. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial, who is a fallen Demonic force is a false god. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has a temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in you. I'll walk with you. I'll be your God. And you can be my people if you do something. If you do what? If you come out from among them. Stop agreeing with them. What is he saying? Look at the word agreement is associated with compromise. It is a spirit. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And don't touch, agree, or compromise what is unclean. In other words, anything that God disapproves of, you should too. Has everybody got it? And anything that he approves of, you should too. He warns us. He said, look, at many are going to fall. Many are not going to make it home because they still approve what I disapprove of. He says, and they will see, receive the same judgment of those that they approve, disapprove of. Now, so if you approve of abortion, same-sex marriage, you approve of the things that God disapproves of, you don't make it home. This is reality. How do you get in? Justice and what? Righteousness. That's the two keys to get home. Other than that, you can't go home. I'm telling you now, because now is the time to awaken. You cannot touch the things that are unclean. Now's the time. Think time is running out. He said, Look it, don't touch what's unclean and I will receive you. I'll be a father to you. How many of y'all want God as a father? Amen. Then you got to come out from among the what's the wicked, what the world approves of. I'll be a father, and you can be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us do what? Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit and perfecting holiness in the fear of God, reverence of God. These are warnings. This is the day of warning right now. It should be going in every fellowship today. It is the day of warning. Because something is about to happen very soon. It's a day of warning. There's a spirit called compromise. Now, my job is to expose voices of influence. That's my job. I'm to expose the wicked. Why? Because that's what God tells me. That's what happened to me in my visitation. Wicked was exposed. The spirit of compromise means you're compromising, you're agreeing with the voice of the enemy. You've, there's a settlement. There's an agreement, there's a settlement, there's a deal, there's a trade-off. You bargain. Hmm. There's an acceptance. And there's an acceptance of standards that are lower than what God says. We cannot compromise. One compromise can move you right off course and mislead you. The enemy approaches you with ifs. If. If. Go to Luke 4. Luke 4. Is everybody okay? Amen. We might need to lock the door just in case. <laughs> How many of y'all know God loves us? Amen. He loves us unconditionally. He says, I correct and chasten those I love. So if you sense a correction and chastening and conviction, it's because he loves you because he doesn't want to lose you. 
That's all this is about. He doesn't want you to, he want, doesn't want you to, to lose. He doesn't want you to be taken from him. People, well, how can anybody take God from God? Because he doesn't interfere with your free will. You choose to walk away. You choose to agree. Amen? We choose to compromise. In Luke 4 and verse 1, let's speak it together. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now he was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a key. That's a key. What? Getting baptized with the Holy Spirit. Why? With power. You get a language that speaks directly to home to your father. Many people are trying to live a life to overcome with no power. That power comes from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. comes from the presence of God. People have been caught up in religion. This is not about a religious arena or a religious state of being. Jesus is not religion. The enemy brings religion. We're not religious. We are from a kingdom. And in the kingdom, there's citizens and there's soldiers. This is a military operation, not some religious move act. Amen? Jesus is Lord of the host means he's the Lord of the army. You're either going to become, an, a, become a warrior in the battle or you'll become a casualty if not willing to fight. And Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, was led by the Spirit. Okay, being filled by the Spirit and being led by the Spirit brings you victory. Amen? And he was led in the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and after when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, if you, if, 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 if you're the son of God, until you know who you are, you will compromise and take the bait of if. See, Jesus wants you to know who you really are. People are seeking identity. They seek identity in their talents, abilities, finances, materialism, strengths, and weaknesses. They seek their identity in everything that the world has. But we just said you're supposed to come out from among them. Be separate. Your identity doesn't come from anyone. Your identity doesn't come by your being a mother, a father, a child, a sister, or brother. Your identity should come from the throne room of God that says son or daughter. That's who we are. Son or daughter. Who are you? I'm a son of the most high God. I get many people, I'll be standing in line somewhere, go, man, what tribe are you from? I tell them Judah. I said, man, really? I said, yeah. My father's the head chief. In fact, he owns that parking place, so you need to move that car. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 3, and the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command the stones to become what? bread but jesus answered saying it is written it is what written, written. well <laughs> hello if you don't know this how can you say it's written Amen. you're gonna look like an idiot out there trying to fight the devil he's gonna kick your butt with a lot of ifs and compromises jesus said it is written now if jesus had to say what do you think we do Amen. <laughs> and you expect to expect to live a successful life forget it You'd be tossed to and fro. You'd be trampled on, misled, never be successful. Every time you get to a place of success, it'll be stolen every time. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Donuts. <laughs> Twinkies. But every word of God, man will live by every word of God. So that's how he's trying to do is get you to speak his word and agree with it. And then the devil taking him up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. So don't tell me the devil doesn't have power. Amen. Amen. Did you ever see these people levitating and all this other goofy stuff of these demonic forces? They can do that but they don't have power over Jesus. 
And the demons know whether Jesus is in you or not. They know the level of your power. They know the level of your strength in Christ. They know it. They know whether they can outwit you, compromise you, or if you. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory. Of course, you know he's a liar. And I'll give it to whomever I wish. I can do this. Therefore, if you do what? Worship. If you what? Worship before me. All is yours. Wow. Do you realize how many musicians are very successful because they worship the devil? They're very successful. I don't know if you heard or not, but there was a, uh, something that came out by Britney Spears. She is so sorry of what she has done. She can't believe she got conned into all of the things of the world. And now she's afraid for her life and for the life of her children. Famous, wealthy, and lost. Realizes. That song we sang earlier, I Have Found Another Way to Live, that's Eric Clampton, who got saved. Him and, uh, what's his name? Win, Winward? Steve Winwood. Steve Winwood. Both of them got saved. And now they're praising God. And they found another way to live in the presence of God. See, we need to find another way to live in the presence of God all the time, not just once in a while. It's different. Therefore, if you'll worship me, you can have all this stuff. And that's what they're doing. They're actually worshiping the devil. Now listen, when you and I were younger, we didn't even know where they were doing it. I was going to every kind of concert and I was flicking the lighter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Smoking dope till I passed out in the seats. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. Didn't know if I died, I'd wake up in hell. I didn't know. Nobody told me. I didn't know I could have power. I didn't know I could be born again of the Spirit. I had no idea. I had to go through hell before I got to heaven. Even the churches I was going to didn't tell me the truth. In fact, one of them told me the Bible wasn't true. And Jesus said to the serpent, I mean to the devil, get behind me, homie. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and only him you shall serve. And then he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, there's that another if. He's if you and. He does the if you. If you are the son of God. Throw, <laughs> throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he shall give his... Sure got hot in here, man. Whoa, what happened? <laughs> Whew. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered and said, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now when the devil had ended, every temptation he departed, now look at, from Jesus until a what? Opportune time. He doesn't come, he doesn't, listen. Okay, I got on, yeah, I'm good. No, you're not good. Amen. You ain't made it until you made it. Amen? Amen? You ain't made it until you made it. The voice of compromise, that's what came. It's a spirit. The devil is the voice of compromise. He'll if you to death. The voice of compromise by temptation, dare, or challenge in Genesis 3. Hallelujah. Genesis 3, man, we're just getting going. 
Jeez. I hope you packed a lunch. <laughs> Verse 1, let's speak it. Now the serpent was more cunning than any what? Well, he was more what? Cunning, crafty. Than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, he did what? Said. So he speaks. A serpent can speak. And he said to the woman, his God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the what? Garden. Garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, touch it, or what? Lest you die. So he was given the same ifs. Ifs. If you, if you. He's trying to challenge. He's trying to get a compromise. This is the way the devil comes to you and I all the time. Compromise, compromise, compromise. So woman, now, and now look at what he says. Then the, weapons, then the serpent said to the woman, you ain't going to die. In other words, he called the God, God a liar, didn't he? You're not going to die. What was he trying to do? Compromise. Amen? For God knows in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you shall be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, they already were like God. So when a woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and tree was desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate it. She also gave to her husband and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they, were, and they knew that they were naked and they sold fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. They tried to cover their own sin. And then they heard because they no longer could see. Remember, they used to see the Lord. They saw him face to face. They saw the serpent. They saw the angels. Adam was in charge. He was the ruler of the earth. God gave him command over the earth. He named all the animals. God was, Adam was made in the image of God. Eve was made in the image of Adam. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Why? Because they could not see him no more. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. And the Lord called out to Adam like he didn't know where he was. Come on, he's God. What was he doing? Finding out what's going on. He was testing Adam. And he called out to Adam who was hiding. He said, where are you at, Adam? Where are you be? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was what? Afraid. Afraid. Why? Because he couldn't see him no more. Why? Because the scales came on. And that's what you and I are born with. We are born with scales in this world. We were born as the offspring of darkness, not the offspring of light anymore. You and I were known as the children of the devil. That's why you were called the little devil when you were a kid. You little devil? And we were. Did you ever hear the terrible twos? What do you think? What is it? Everything is mine. Mine. Mine, mine, mine. Everything is mine. Go ahead, play with it, share your toys. Mine. <laughs> Everything is mine, right? It's all about myself, me, myself, and I. So here, the Lord is trying to speak to them, and they can only hear their voice. They can only hear his voice because they were blinded. And the first thing he said, I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And the Lord said, who told you that? Who told you that? Oh, who told you that you were afraid? Who told you? In fact, who told you to partake of this tree? Who told you this? Now, here's where blame comes. And now, Eve blames. And he says, well, my wife did it. She, she's the one that gave me the fruit. Which is not all about that. I'm not going to get into that today. I'm going to make it real simple. She fell to fornication, and she produced offsprings. That's where the two kids come from. Those were serpent kids. Hello. And that family line still comes down to people don't understand that. Anyways, to get, make a long story short, a new voice, loud, aggressive, demanding, controlling, deceptive, lying, and compromising took rule of the earth. 
everybody got it? I'm going to say it again. A new voice took rule of the earth. It was a voice that was loud, aggressive, demanding, controlling, deceptive, lying, and compromising. Took control of the earth. He's called the prince of power of error. Loud, aggressive, demanding, controlling, deceptive, lying, and compromising. In John chapter 8. That's why the verse, first voice you usually hear is, it's usually loud. And you're going to hear, if, or you're nothing, or whatever. You're going to hear a downgrade. John chapter 8. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Amen. Spirit of compromise. He's a voice. Remember, every thought has a voice. Every voice has a presence. Every presence has a purpose. And that purpose and that voice is going to release a desire. And that desire is going to either please God or displease God. It's going to be according to the will of God or the will of the devil, the powers of darkness. John chapter 8 and verse 42. Is everybody okay? John chapter 8 and verse 42. Let's speak it together. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. You know, the word, when he speaks of love me, he says, if you love me, you obey me. So don't go around telling people that you love God when you're not willing to follow him and obey him. Because God says you're a liar. If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my words. You are of your father, the what? The devil. The devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. That's why you and I must be born again. We get a new father. The real father. Because for you and I, when we were brought into this world, the fa our father was the devil. We are offsprings of darkness until born of God. That's why you must be born again. Now you are born of the spirit. No longer born of the world. You are of your father, the devil. Verse 44. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a what? Murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a what? A liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you don't believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. The devil is a murderer. In other words, he is one who sheds blood because the life of the flesh is in the blood. He loves to shed human blood. That's why they're sacrifices. Let me share something with you. Most people don't even know 300,000 children are missing a year from this country. They won't tell you. What are they used for? Pedophile? Perversion, rape, sacrifice, and meals. That's reality. It's sick, isn't it? 
But you've got to understand how sick the devil and the powers of darkness and those who serve them. Why do you think all of the pedophiles are being busted now? Many of them. See, you've got to pray, Lord, expose every pedophile in our government. Expose every pedophile. They are stealing. They are taking our children. And they are not being reported because the government is serving under Satan's agenda. But God put someone in there now who's beginning to expose it. The reason why people don't like Trump is because they can't hear God because they're not God's. They're not his. Does everybody understand it? God put Trump in office. I'm telling you right now. He put Trump in office. That's his servant right now. His purpose is to expose wickedness, change the course of history, establish the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven in preparation for the Lord's return. His son-in-law will most likely sign that get a peace treaty in Jerusalem. And when that peace treaty is signed, we got three and a half years left before we go home. Yes, there's an awakening going on. It's happening. Oh, hallelujah. The devil is a murderer. He loves to shed blood. The blood that is shed opens dimensional ports. They must shed blood and drink blood to maintain their position in power. Does everybody get it? In fact, they do more than that. So where there's a lot of bloodshed, there's dimensional ports open. The devil is a murderer. There's no truth. He's a liar. But only those born of God hears God's words, not the words of compromise. John 16. John 16, verse 5. Aren't you glad you're here today? Yeah. I am. I'm glad you're here today. I want you to understand that I'm not teaching. It's the Holy Spirit that teaches. The anointing teaches. I can't do this stuff. Ask my wife. <laughs> Woohoo! John 16, verse 5. Let's speak it together because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has lifted or filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Can you imagine Jesus being with these guys for all of this time? They're watching him raise the dead, lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, do all kinds. And then Jesus sends them out and says, look, man, no problem. I'm with you because I'm standing here with you. My presence is extending with you. Go ahead. Go get them. Go drive out evil. Go. And they came back rejoicing. Whoa, this is great, man. These things, people doing it, this, all kinds of stuff. People getting healed and delivered and freed with all, filled, all kinds of things happening. Man, we're having a great time. Jesus said, man, don't rejoice over there, but rejoice that your name's written in the book of life. He says, so listen, I got to tell you, it's to your advantage that I go. For if I don't go, the helper will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send them to you. Now, Jesus is speaking to them after. He's sharing with them. This is important. He's saying, I, I must pay the price. Why? Because, you, look, at the Father sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the one who impregnated Mary. Amen? The Holy Spirit impregnated Mary. So in reality, Jesus is the offspring of the Holy Spirit. Does everybody get it? But the Father, the Word, and the Spirit are one. Because the Spirit is the voice of God. 
Does everybody understand that? So he manifested himself. He came into this realm. So that people could now didn't have to hear a voice. They could see the voice. They could see the word. They could see the truth. They can record how the truth of God Almighty, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty called the Christ came into the world. That's what's called the anointing. That's why Jesus said, I didn't, it's not me that speaks, it's my Father. If you see me, you see the Father. He kept trying to tell him, it isn't me. A body was prepared for me. That's it. But I am the Father. I've come. Why? Because Jesus came from the bosom of God. God said, I'm going to take a part of myself and call him son, and I'm going to send him into the earth. So in this realm, the world will know me. They will see me. There will no more be an assumption. It won't be, just be hearsay. They will record what I do in this world. And they'll pass the message on to every single one. And I will leave my presence. I will leave my voice. I will leave my power. I will leave my truth to those who are willing to receive my spirit and be filled with my spirit. See, he left it for me and you. And he says, that's why it's important that I depart from you. That way you can have all of me. And not only can you, now it's not going to, I won't be outside of you no more. I'm going to live in you. You'll be the temple. Because you are now the body that was prepared for the living God. Oh, hallelujah. Now look at this. You ready? In verse 8, And when the Holy Spirit, the Helper, has come, He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe or they don't follow me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. And of judgment because the ruler of this world is what? He's judged. He's just out on bail right now. Amen? His sentence is coming. It's coming. He will be thrown in the lake of fire with all the angels that have followed him and anyone that follows the devil. In verse 12, he said, look, at, I still got a lot of things to tell you, but you can't bear them now. You can't comprehend them. You can't understand them. However, when he, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth has come, the Comforter, he's going to guide you into all truth. For he will take, for he will not speak of his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. That's the Holy Spirit. He's going to tell you things to come. He's going to speak to you. He's going to teach you. He will glorify Jesus. For he will take of what is mine and do what? And declare to you. Why? Because we are joint heirs of Christ. Hmm. The ruling voice of the world has been judged, but not removed. I'm going to say that again. The ruling voice of the world right now has been judged, but not removed. But another ruling voice has been released to anyone who enters the kingdom of Christ and willing to go through the dismantle of self, and the dislodging of Satan's powers. I'm going to say that again. Another voice has been released to anyone who enters the kingdom of Christ and willing to go through the dismantle of self and the dislodging of Satan's power of influence and presence. Because that is the only way that you will begin to hear the voice of God. Other than that, you'll still hear all the other voices. And I'm going to tell you something vitally important. Because when you allow that spirit of compromise to compromise you, God can't trust you. And neither can those in the kingdom. Because they know you compromise. I can't trust no one that compromises. Why? Because they're easily swayed. One day they'll turn on you unless they stop it and they're able to see. See, everyone's heart should be wanting to fulfill the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. If there's a compromise in that, there's an open door. 
First John chapter 2 and verse 18. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. In other words, there's a lot of liars out there, a lot of pretenders, a lot of compromisers. He said they went out from us, but they were not of us. Why? Because they compromised. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest, but that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. That anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, which is sealed, carried by the Holy Spirit, the voice of God, who wants to speak to you, guide you, teach you. It's His words. His words, He'll speak to you through the Word. He'll speak to you through dreams and visions. He'll speak to you through revelation. He'll speak to you. In multiple ways. It's eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Carried by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, the, His office is communicator. His office is what? Communicator. I get kind of weary when people tell me, well, the Father spoke to me. Well, the Father's always speaking to you. Well, is there a voice between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? No. It's all one voice. There may be a different character to it. Amen? Why? Because the voice can come to you as the Father. It can come to you as the Son. And it can come to you as the Holy Spirit. But it's still the Holy Spirit. It's the character of it. So you'll know the voice by its character, won't you? Does everybody understand that? Oh, hallelujah. I speak to my dad every morning. But the communicator between me and my dad, not my physical father, my true father, my father, God Almighty, Jehovah great God Almighty, that's my dad. I speak to him every day through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And you can too. He's not a respecter of person. You cannot speak to dead people. There is no answer. If you get an answer, it's a familiar spirit called a demon. And he will access you and mislead you. Those are called familiar spirits, divination spirits. John 14. Yeah, John 14. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Amen. What we are having today is a training session. Right. We're being trained. Getting ready and prepared for what's coming. You got to ask yourself, what are you compromising in? Self-examination. What am I compromising in? Man, am I compromising in my prayer time? Am I compromising... What am I compromising? Am I compromising in my worship? I'm expecting God to do things when I'm not doing what he's asking me to do. What am I touching that's unclean? John 14, verse 25. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let's start a little. Let's go to 23. Jesus answered and said to them, if anyone loves me, he will keep my what? He will do what? He'll keep my word. If anyone loves me, he'll keep my word. And my father will love him. And he will come to him and make our, and we will come to him and do what? Make our home with him. How many of y'all want to be the home of the father? Well, how is he going to be? How's the father going to be the home? Through the spirit. Because the father, the word, and the spirit are one. The Father thinks, the Word speaks, the Holy Spirit moves. Oh, glory. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Verse 24. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but who? The Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the Helper, 
the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. In whose name? The name of Jesus. He will teach you all things, and he will bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Wow. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I'm going away and, make, and I'm coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I'm going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I also give you commandment. Arise and let us go forth. Oh, praise God. Arise and let us go forth. Go to Romans 14. Remember, the Holy Spirit will teach you and bring things to remembrance. He will teach you and bring things to remembrance. See, you need to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That's why you need to ask Him for everything. Holy Spirit, how do I do this? What do I do that? Well, here, invite Him every morning. Good morning, Holy Spirit, right? John 14. I mean, uh, Romans 14, sorry. Romans. I used to be a Roman. I was a Roman Catholic. I roamed everywhere looking for the truth. I roamed in all the wrong places, I'll tell you that. Romans 14, 16. Let's speak it together. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as what? Evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but what? Righteousness and peace and joy where? In the Holy Spirit. Now, let me explain to you about righteousness. It's uncompromising. Righteousness is uncompromisingly. And also uncompromisingly and right standing with God. That is called righteousness. Uncompromising. When Abraham was told by God what to do, he didn't compromise. He did. It was counted for him as righteousness. Uncompromising. You know, one of the things, righteousness is uncompromising, right standing with God with peace, joy, and righteousness in the kingdom of God. Why? Because it's his presence that brings joy. Ooh, Romans 13 for a minute. In verse 8. Oh, I like this one. Romans 13, verse 8. A couple more scriptures and we're done. Amen. Is everybody there? Amen. Oh, no one anything. Hello. Let me tell you, the devil, devil loves to get people in debt. Oh, that's his job. Why? You know why people get in debt? Because they compromise. They compromise. That's what started the whole thing. Their, des their compromise allowed a desire to get something and put them in debt. Every one of us has bought a lemon at one time. And I don't mean from the, gro from the produce section. Amen? Everyone's bought something and said, man, I wish I'd never have bought that. Listen, the government love. <laughs> Let me tell you about school loans. The government loves to get you in debt with school loans. Yeah. Grants are cool. 
The problem is, is most people don't complete, then they end up, that grant ends up becoming a debt, and they're paying that debt forever. Many people become doctors. Half of their practice is paying off their school loans. But I'm just sharing with you that one of the things the enemy likes to do is get people in debt. Unless God tells you to purchase something, don't. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not love or you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Why? Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilled, is the fulfillment of the law. And do this knowing that time, that the time is now. To what? It is high time to what? Awake. Awake. Awake out of what? Sleep. Let me tell you, there's many believers that are sleeping. They're sleeping. They're listening to everything, doing everything, whatever. Always fulfilling self. Never seeing about the kingdom. Their life is about fulfilling self, not kingdom. They're asleep. And knowing this, and do this knowing that the time is now, and it's high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when it was first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Oh, hallelujah. Compromise, debt. Awake, we need to be awake. We need to be alert to the voices of influence. We need to stop it. <laughs> Don't give in. Use your weapons. Submit to God's governing rule. Resist the devil. We are born again. That means, you know what happened when you were going born again? Man, you got awakened into a world that's like, oh my God. When you are born again, you are awakened. The next thing you realize, my God, I'm on a planet. We're on a planet, you know that? Think about that. People are so busy with everything else, they don't think about all those things. We are on a planet. I was driving down the road one day, and the roof thing was open. And I looked up, and I said, and there's a big moon out there. I said, my God, Lord, I'm on a planet. How did I get here? He said, I sent you. See, one day, all of this is going to go. It's all going to go. But we got a while yet. We still got to wait for everything to manifest. Seven year tribulation, thousand year reign. And then we're out of here. Oh, hallelujah. We are born again and awakened into another world of multiple voices of influence, eyes of influence, desires of influence. Everything to distract you and keep you away from fulfilling the will of God. Amen. The word tells us in 1 Corinthians, you don't have to go there, verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 33 and 34, associations bring impartations. Yes. They bring influence. Be careful who you associate with and what you agree with. He says, awake to righteousness, uncompromising and right standing with God. Awake to righteousness, uncompromising. And I'm going to close at Ephesians 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Voice of compromise. He's a spirit. It's a spirit of compromise. Boy, he meets you every morning. Yeah. He'll even bring you coffee. Or she'll even bring you coffee. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every morning you get up, there's the enemy. 
The first thing he wants to compromise, man, you don't need to pray this morning. Maybe you ought to just skip that prayer. You know, you got a busy day today. Oh, you don't need to warfare. You warfare yesterday. Oh. Compromise. You, if you give in to that, he already has you. He's put a hook in your jaw. There are people, if they could see spiritually, are walking around with hooks in their jaws and, and strings. They look like cats. <laughs> Ephesians 5, verse 1, let's speak it. Therefore what? Be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness or foolish talking or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For if you know that no fornicator, for this you know that no fornicator or unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. In other words, they are not going home. This doctrine of once saved, always saved, is not daddy. That is a lie from hell. Who you serve when you die is where you go. Amen? That's not a doctrine of the Father. That's a doctrine of the devil. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Verse 7, therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no what? Fellowship. Fellowship. Fellowship brings agreement. Fellowship brings compromise. Have no fellowship with unfruitful works of what? Darkness, but rather what? Expose them. Amen? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light and life. See then that you work circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are what? Evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the what? Will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine like the world in which is dissipation. But be what? Filled with the what? Holy Spirit. Wow. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing, making melody in their hearts to the Lord and giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another in the what? Fear of God. Reverence, honor, and respect. Reverence, honor, and respect. If you're, the word says, work your own salvation out with fear and trembling. Remember, who you serve when you die is where you go. Either angels come and get you, or the devils come and get you. Jesus warns us all the time. You think, listen, Paul got revelation from the Spirit. These are letters to the churches of believers, not unbelievers. He was warning them over and over. Do you not understand? If you serve the devil when you die, you go there. But I accepted Jesus Christ 20 years ago. It's who you serve when you die is where you go. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we give you all the glory and honor and praise. We thank you for your word. Lord, have mercy upon us and let your grace abound. We repent for any compromise that we have done of word, thought, or deed, or association, or of people, places, and things. Any fellowship with darkness, instead of exposing them, we compromise them. We repent. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask you to drive out every spirit of compromise in our life because it just leads to destruction. And fill us with the Holy Spirit, granting us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive. Protecting this word that's been brought to us by your spirit through the anointing. And let it be protected by the blood of Jesus so that it may grow and bear fruit and bring to remembrance in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen.